Hey guys, just wanted to show you something I've been working on for not very long, honestly. Maybe, well, I think about a week. I think today actually may be a week since I've, I've started this. But this is Deepwater Culture aeroponics system that I made myself at home with altogether probably took me like 20 bucks, something along those lines. I'm going to show you the components, explain how it works, try to make it as quick, painless, and short as possible. Uh, we're going to start by identifying the plants here. This one right here is tomato. It was growing outside. Need to cut, you know, these uh, dying leaves off here. But this is a clone from a sucker from a, one of my tomato plants. This right here is a gardenia from my friend Janet, and it has grown a solid amount in the last week. This is Japanese, uh, sorry, Japanese holly. There are three plants in there. One, two, and three. Those are from the parent right out there in the black container, which I'm going to make bonds out of. The same is true for Gardenia. If I don't make bonds out of these, I may give them to Janet, who is, again, the, uh, the friend of mine who gave me this right here because she loves plants as well. And here we have cilantro seeds. I've never grown, or I've never grown anything aeroponically, honestly, until, uh, until this system here. But I am trying it out. If any of you guys know anything about this and I'm doing stuff wrong, please let me know. I'm winging it. I'm trying it. I had an extra tub left over from the move. I like to grow stuff in the wintertime. I want to grow some, some pepper plants. And hopefully, you see here, I only have four right now. I hope to have at least eight, uh, eight plants growing here in the near future. And, uh, yeah, I have some pepper plants outside cloning right now. I've got some pepper seeds if they don't work out. So... Fingers crossed, I'm also using it to uh, clone things to make or to use for bonsai, again, such as the gardenia. But moving on, just going to get into explaining what's up with this thing. We're going to start with this. This is a tub. It came from Home Depot, or I'm sorry, Lowe's. It was like 450 something like that. I think it's like 18 gallons, something along those lines. But it's your standard tub lid connected to this. We have this guy over here, not thin the cat. No, no, but he's going to model it for you. That is a pump. It's just It has the two outlets. I have those connected with a T. Then there is the check valve. That all runs straight into, underneath the handle there was already a hole. That goes in there, and that just runs. Anyway, just one of these guys goes down. There's a bubble stone, also like you would find in an aquarium at the bottom, bubbling up. And uh, the water's filled to, I think, right around here. I would say something like that. Somewhere probably between here and here. We'll say right there. Anyways, um, this right here is what I started with for a pot because net pots are quite expensive. Or not super expensive, but I got like six of these, or I think Celia did, six of these from Dollar Tree for a dollar and took a magnifying glass to them, made my own net pot. And that's what I've done with all these so far. The holes at the bottom were quite large, though. So, honestly, you may be able to get started even without putting the holes in them. But it was just a magnifying glass in five minutes, and that's how we got those. Uh, to get the holes, very simple. Do that. Trace it. Cut it out. Do it however you'd like. The way I found best was after I traced it, I just on the inside of the line where I placed so that I'd make sure that this would actually fit inside and that uh, the hole wouldn't be the exact same size of this. I scored around it with an X-Acto knife. I cut an X in the center of the circle and then I use scissors to snip up to the line where I scored it this way, this way, this way, and this way then bend you know the little uh, pie pieces that you just made in and it snaps it snaps off pretty easily. But on to this um, we're gonna take this out of the lid right now kinda show you what's up you can't really see in there because I do have nutrients in there and there's not a lot of light in here as you can see I don't have any lighting at all I mean there's the ceiling fan there but I'm um, for right now I'm, I'm going really basic I'm just using residual sunlight I'm gonna get some lights in here probably some fluorescence or something to uh, to, to use this with so that uh, it, they, you know they get real light there's no direct sunlight that comes in here but this is a net pot with some uh, some perlite, and this is what we use in place of soil. Aeroponics are, I believe, an offshoot of hydroponics, so its soil is growing, and you use the net pot, you put it in the little slot there, and again, I'm not sure you can see all the bubbles. Yeah, you can see them right there. Those are just below the bottom of the pot when it's in 
the uh, in you know in the top of it. And when the the bubbles pop, it shoots off little bits of water. Those little bits of water hit the perlite. I believe that's the pronunciation of, of the uh, the medium that we've used here. And from there, it wicks up so all of it gets nice and moist. We have it covered in foil so that one, no light gets into it, creating algae, and two. Uh, just to prevent evaporation. There may be other reasons as well. You don't want light on your roots any more than you have to. I've put some electrical tape around the holes just to kind of seal them off a little bit because they were not perfect and they were a little too big. But uh, you can see there, I've even got a root coming out of there, and that is the plan. That's why you have the holes in the net pot. Eventually, all of the roots of all these plants, I'm not sure about the these things right here. I'm not sure if they'll actually root this way, if I can even clone them, but I'm going to try it. But uh, the goal is once they get too big, the roots, instead of being confined within that, they are going to go down into the water and they're going to just suspend themselves and dangle in the water. They're going to be aerated, uh, with, or I'm sorry, they're going to be hit with aerated water. There's also nutrients, water soluble nutrients in the water. So it is nice, brown, and icky. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm going to get some lights in here so that I can do something a little better with it. But otherwise, it's really simple. This whole setup maybe cost me like 20 bucks. The lights, you know, I'm going to get some, uh, probably just compact fluorescence, honestly. So I'm going to try to keep my lighting costs down to about, you know, 20 bucks also. At the most. Maybe a little bit more, but who cares. Either way, it's, uh, it's something that it, I'm amazed at how well it's worked. Like, I haven't really looked at this gardenia since I planted it. I mean, I, I glance at it every day, but honestly, the best thing about this is you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to water it. You don't have to feed it. Um, this has only been going on for a week now. I'm unsure if I'm going to change the water on the regular or at all. Some people say that you must change it every week. Some say every two weeks. Some say every month. Some say don't change it at all and it'll be okay. I'm probably going to change it eventually, but uh, you know, We'll see at that point. Oh, for the clones? Because that's that's one of the main purposes of this, for me at least, is to uh, be able to clone things a little more easily so that I can just snip a plant and uh, put it in there. These are harder to cover with foil when it actually has roots. These were not. I just put the foil across the top, tucked it nicely under the edges, and since this has a nice sharp edge on it, I just shoved it down in there and it goes right into the perlite and uh, you know, then into the water. I actually just put this in like five, 10 minutes ago, so I'm gonna check it and see if it's wet. It is wet, I don't know if you can see the water there, so it's working perfectly, the placement is fine. I have been, use or I have been using these, these are just three pound um, steel plates that, uh, you know, for weightlifting and stuff. I've been putting those on there just to keep it a little bit closer to the water. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore, but uh, for now I will. But thanks for watching, guys. Give this a shot. It's ridiculous how cheap it is. You probably have this crap just laying around your house. I, I mean, except for this stuff. This stuff I didn't. You can use different sorts of things, stones and things along those lines. But, uh, you know, something like this is uh, it's supposed to be pH balanced, so it's not going to throw anything off. It's not going to screw anything up because I don't want to have to worry about this thing any more than I have to. So it's pretty much just leave it here, forget about it, um, and and that's all. That's that's the way this whole thing works, and just the way, uh, again, the amount that they've grown in the last week has blown my mind. This guy, in particular, has uh, just blown my mind. Much better than I think it would have outside, and that's included in the full sunlight and the dirt. Maybe not as good. Who knows? I, I didn't do it, so who, who's to say truly, but... Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and if you do this, or if you've got a system like this going on, I found out that lots of people grow things uh, hydroponically, aeroponically, deep water culture, all these different soilless systems. I've, I've been finding that a lot of people have these setups, and uh, yeah, it's it interests the crap out of me.